Hello, fellow angel enthusiasts, Devin Dewar here with some messages for you, as well as some guidance from the angels. At the time of this recording, it is June 30th, 2022. However, please know that when I connect with the angels and ask for guidance, I always ask that these messages reach you at the time it is meant for you. Remember, this is a group message, so if something doesn't resonate, please just leave it behind and make sure to take note of what does resonate with you. You know, I am always going to encourage you that if something resonates with you to write it down in your book of evidence, try not to spend too much time trying to interpret that message in the moment because you might miss other guidance. I take so many things into consideration when I'm connecting with the angels and using my intuitive abilities to receive signs and symbols and guidance for all of us. And I encourage you to do the same thing. So as you're listening to this message, Anything at all that catches your attention or makes you um, stop and think about something, write that down and then move on. And then we can go back and reflect on that later when you have more time. I am so grateful all of you are here. Thank you for this opportunity. It is always my honor to share these messages with you, to connect with the angels on all of our behalf. Please know that I always say a prayer of protection and ask that we only connect with the highest vibrational beings. And I do set protection around these messages and around those listening to it. I was guided to give this guidance a little differently than I have in the last few weeks. A lot of the messages we've been getting recently have had kind of the same theme. So if you feel called to go back and listen to past angel messages over the last couple of weeks, it may give you some really great hindsight to what's been going on for you or how some of the guidance has come to play in your life. This is my favorite thing about using the book of evidence. If something catches your attention and you don't know what it means, write it down and then go back and review. So that's where sometimes going back and listening to guidance from last week or a couple weeks before, and then reviewing some things that have occurred for you or have inspired you, you can see how the angels were reaching out to you, how you were getting signs and symbols. So the reason I say that it was a little different this time is because they wanted me to give guidance in a broad sense, not dividing it up in categories, but to also remind you to think about these three areas of your life, your health and fitness, your career and finance, and your romance and relationships. Whether you're looking for romance or not, it could also be a relationship with a sibling or some other family member or friend. So usually if something catches your attention and it's regarding a relationship, it's the first person that comes to mind. So keep that in mind. Uh, Try not to question things too much. That's when we try to get too much in our head about things instead of just listening to the guidance and listening to our gut. So I'm going to dive into this guidance and I'm not going to divide it up around that because everybody is here for a different reason. The angels know who is going to hear this message and when they're going to hear this message. So if there's something particular on your mind and it stands out and it resonates with you for a particular category, trust, trust that and, um, write that down in your book of evidence, your journal, wherever you keep your guidance from your angels or guides And let's move forward. Before I get started with the guidance, I want to remind you that we have our upcoming online coffee with Devin for July. It's July 13th. Make sure you're signed up for my free newsletter at devindoer.com so you can get the login details. It's a totally free monthly discussion held the second Wednesday of the month where other intuitives, anybody's enthusiastic about learning about angels, whether you're just getting to know about spirituality or you've been doing this your entire life, it's a round table to come together, discuss the angels, discuss using your intuitive abilities, sharing intuitive experiences, and of course, supporting each other as we all grow together in this amazing spiritual journey. So make sure you're signed up for my newsletter. I would absolutely love to connect with you there. And also don't forget, you can sign up for my private Facebook group, Coffee with Devin, to ask messages in between and connect with other angel enthusiasts. Now jumping right into the guidance. This one came through really strong and it This particular message guides the guidance for the entire message for today or whenever you receive this message or come across it. And it was talking about viewing love and the way we view love to be careful that it's not considered a transaction, like a business transaction. Sometimes we don't realize we're putting conditions on love that we can be too extreme in what we expect. Now, I did get guidance that for some of us, this has to do with our career, where we tend to have a tendency to work too hard and play too hard. So the guidance to start 
is when we view love, let's bring balance in. Let's be careful that we're not putting conditions around what love looks like. So that can regard our love for our career, our work, our projects, but that can also come into play with our health and fitness and our love and relationships. So that's why right away the angels were asking me to guide you to allow your mind to wander to where you feel you are needing guidance and where you feel the angels are pointing you. The guidance was also talking about how we really need to be careful that something that maybe once was good for us may now be causing us pain. I was receiving guidance. This has to do a lot with some of the things we put into our body. Maybe we're putting some low vibrational foods or beverages into our body. Here in the U.S., we are getting ready to celebrate our Independence Day on the 4th of July, and that does tend to involve a lot of foods that aren't always in our highest interest. So I felt like that was kind of a heads up to make sure we're watching, you know, our diet, but then also what we are consuming on social media, what we are consuming via TV or movies, um, you know, maybe conversations were around that may have low vibrational energies to it, tendencies, gossip. Um, so be careful. You're not consuming low vibrational events either. And that's, that's a challenging thing. You don't always know what somebody's going to bring up, but you can always distance yourself and set, set some healthy boundaries. One thing we're also being asked to do is to make sure we're not dwelling on anything in particular, spending too much time worrying to try to remain present and focus on where we want to head with a positive mindset, which I understand is easier said than done. Sometimes I get asked, what is an angel intuitive? You may have seen on my website or other posts, sometimes I will describe myself as an angel intuitive. And I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you that it's exactly what it sounds like. I use my intuitive abilities to connect with the angels. And when I feel called to use that title to describe myself, it's only for an organizational reason. There's so many ways we can connect. There are so many modalities out there. Some people like to connect with passed away loved ones. Some people like to connect with ancestors or spirit guides. Maybe they use the energies of nature and trees and plants or animals. I just use it as a way to express to you how I connect. And if you don't know my past, I actually graduated with my degree in accounting and did very left brain work for many, many years. And I love numbers and I love organization. So one of the things that appealed to me about working with the angels, especially with archangels, it's a way of organizing the energy. I like to use the example in Catholicism, they have saints for different types of things that they need to call upon, correct? That's kind of how I view working with the angels as well. For example, I call on Archangel Michael for protection because that energy is associated with protection. I like to think of it that way. If there's another way that appeals to you, that's totally fine. That's the beauty of this. That's why there's so many different spiritual teachers out there. That's why there's so many different ways to be spiritual. And there really is no right or wrong way to do it because it's all about the intention. This is why I always encourage you to write down your intentions, to say your intentions before you connect, because this way you're showing where your heart is. And that's also helping protect you. I wanted to explain that to you because I also will refer to myself as a spiritual teacher because what I'm really after is teaching you how to connect with the angels or however you want to use your intuitive abilities on your own to know and trust that you were born with intuitive abilities and you can do this on your own. When I feel called to connect with a passed away loved one, I have just as much confidence in that as when I'm connecting with the angels because I set that intention. I wanted to offer that to you because I feel like that was part of this message here about dwelling on things or getting too caught up on in right or wrong or working too hard. And to make sure we're not setting too, condi too many conditions around what we are doing. Another thing to remember is just that if something doesn't resonate to leave it behind. And for me personally, there are certain modalities out there that don't resonate with me. It's not that they're wrong. It's not that there's anything that is bad or negative. It's just something that doesn't resonate with me. Whereas angels do resonate with me. I feel very safe working with the angels. This is probably because I was raised as a Christian, very safe, loving environment. I had my grandmother who is an amazing spiritual mentor to me, who is a Christian and also spoke about the angels often. And of course, 
Many of you have heard my story about seeing angels when I was in college. If you haven't seen that, that's on my YouTube channel, but that was an experience for me that was life changing. And I felt very safe in the energy of angels. So that's how I refer to it. That's how I organize it. All I really want for anybody who's listening to these messages is for us all to raise each other's vibration, raise the vibration of the planet and focus on only love coming from a loving place. I find that sometimes when people have been hurt or have felt rejected by different modalities or even people that they thought loved them, that's when they will lash out and criticize other modalities. And I want you to know that I'm always coming from a place of love with this. My intention is to offer this to you to give you confidence in your own intuitive abilities. Going back to that overall guidance about not dwelling on anything too much, if something isn't resonating with you, or if you're feeling really stuck, it could be that you're dwelling on it. You're putting that energy of worry into it. So we're being asked to set those new and new intentions because we do have a holiday. Um, even though many of us get pretty busy with outdoor activities for the 4th of July, if you do have some extra time to yourself where you could possibly go journal and maybe create a new vision board or write new intentions, this is a great time to do it. We're halfway through 2022. We've had some very interesting energies. And so whatever goals you set for yourself back in January around the new years, review those goals, see if they're still appropriate, see if you need to update some things. And I'm always going to encourage you to update your affirmations as well, because we want to make sure we're feeling the affirmation, feeling the visualization to really put that energy behind it and use the law of attraction. Any way that you can share the richness of your feelings and motivate others to motivate yourself will bring you tangible abundance. And this is the thing that was bringing us into our message about the tangible. What are we putting into our body? What are we consuming? So make sure when it comes to what you're eating, what you're watching, the people you're around, the conversations you're having, that you're doing it in a high vibrational way and you're protecting yourself from things that might not be in your highest interest. And of course, we always have to have faith in our ability to do this and faith in God that we will attract the things we want when we set these intentions. So we are showing ourselves faith. We are showing the angels and God that we have faith when we do these things, when we take the time. I can share with you that uh, there have been a couple of days this week that I've had some sudden sadness come up for me um, and it was really unexpected unexpected for me. And I, I was very surprised by it. And as like last week, um, you know, I shared with you in last week's message about how I handled it this week, the way I handled this a little differently, because it was a little different was just by talking through my feelings with a loved one, by just kind of airing them out. I gave them voice. I just needed to tell somebody I love that I was feeling this way. I didn't need a solution. Um, I just basically needed a witness, I guess is how you would say it. Um, and I discovered that the sadness was, um, this feeling over, um, the way time seems to some by go sometimes go by too fast. Sometimes we feel stuck and nothing's moving. But for me lately, I think it was just kind of, um, feeling like the summer is going by too fast for me. I love my time with my kids. I love the slow pace of summer. My sun sign is cancer. So this energy is great for me. I do have a birthday coming up in a little while. So that's on the calendar. And so I just had to kind of air out that I don't understand where the sadness is coming from, but it's there and I want to talk about it. And I felt so much better. And of course I called on the angels to help me with that. And I had a much better night's sleep. And I wanted to share that with you as a reminder to allow yourself to release these feelings. You know, it starts with just acknowledging that you're feeling this way and then finding ways to help it move through you. And I find that Often we think that if we don't address the feelings that we're controlling them, that we're somehow preventing them from getting out of control, but that's when they tend to build up too much. And the fear is that we're not going to be able to control them. Like these feelings are going to spill over and they're just going to keep spilling and we're not going to be able to control them. And that's why I advise you to have a lot of things in your toolbox, your spiritual toolbox for handling these things to help you have a framework to work with, whether that's having somebody who's like a counselor to you or a friend, having your journal, prayer, meditation, chanting, yoga, 
yoga, all the things that we can do to bring into our daily practice, our spiritual practice to help us work through these emotions. Another message that was coming up for us was having to do with trusting where we have true love in our life and trusting where we feel romance. So if you listen to last week's message about the romances, I know those, there was some very specific messages for some very specific people about romance in last week's message. So if you missed that, go back and listen if you feel called to, um, but also to find ways of having romance in our life was part of that message. And they're reiterating that again today. What makes us feel joy and love for life? I heard someone mention the other day that um, this they find that wherever their mind wanders when they're daydreaming is where their heart really is. And so I thought that was a kind of a fun little tool to think about. If you're wondering, how do I have more romance in my life, especially if it's not something you're necessarily looking for, think about what you do when you daydream and actually take time to daydream, but then notice what you daydream about and allow your daydreams to go anywhere. Also, they wanted to mention that some of us have some past life relationships that are forming right now. Um, these are relationships. They may be people that are already in our life, but maybe we weren't as close in the past and now we're starting to work together more or we're starting to see them more. And, um, we do have some energy with these people, some karma to work through, and it can be good karma. It can be things that we agreed to come here and work together on to work on a project together, or it could just be understanding the way that we're being triggered by these past life relationships are things that we need to work on. So pay attention to things like that, that feel familiar. Um, if you don't like the concept of reincarnation or you're not comfortable with it, or you don't like referring to past lives, then I would just encourage you to review your age zero to 30. Um, what's going on for you there? What are the themes there? What were, what are the people that, who are the people that kept coming up for you? That's how you can kind of review that. And then the final message that came through was about day-to-day -day guidance. You know, I like to ask, okay, what do we do with this guidance right now? I've, I've just heard this guidance. I'm not entirely sure what all of this means. I'm not really sure how to put it into play yet. And they said that they wanted us to start with telling ourselves that we are innocent in everything that we are doing, that the feelings of heaviness that we feel are just part of the human process. And when we feel guilt or we feel anger or blame, that they ask us to give this up to God, to ask for forgiveness and to forgive ourselves. So start with that. And, you know, that was actually the message for last week. Uh, they, they went directly to the forgiveness thing about where in your life maybe you need to forgive someone else or forgive yourself. Um, and so I feel like this is a carry through of that, you know, starting with the forgiveness and trusting that newborn innocence of your soul where we really are all part of God. We are all one. And, um, even those people out there that hurt our feelings, you know, um, trusting that on some level there is love there, whether we feel it in this reality or not, um, all being one, all being part together in the universe, part of God is where we're going to find that innocence ultimately. So even if in this physical realm, even in this physical earth, we don't find that innocence there. We don't find that love from that other person, or it's hard for us to offer love to just trust that all will be good. God loves us and you are very special. So know that you can always go back into that space, ask the angels for help for that and trust in the innocence of your soul. I'm sending you so much love. I know the energy right now is tough out there. It's really tough. And I want you to know that you have a tribe here that you can reach out to. Let me know in the comments what resonated with you. If you have any questions for me, I do have some fun offerings coming up for you. Like I mentioned in the last uh, week's message, but I, it's still not ready to reveal all the details, but it's going to be ways to teach you to connect with the angels directly on your own on a daily basis. Cause I really want to encourage you to start building faith in yourself to do that. And then also remember that there's a lot of ways to connect and you can always find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, in my newsletter or devendoer.com and connect with me there and get some other angel messages to carry you through. But you know, we are your tribe. You have other people here that are here to support you. So make sure to post in uh, the Facebook group as well. If you're needing support there 
And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. I really hope to see all of you at the coffee and I will keep you posted on anything else that's going on. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. It's always my honor to connect with you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.